How's it going? Sit down, Big House Board. We are back here for another... Pos- well, actually, no, we're not back here for another positional rankings. This is the first positional rankings here of the 2024 season. If you guys don't know what this series is, basically, we go through every single position in the NRL and we go through every single player and we rank them from elite to quality, do the job, not that great and unproven. This is the hookers tier list, and we have about 41 players here. So obviously, you know, we've got the starters, but there's also guys knocking on the door, a couple of rookies and whatnot. That's why we've got unproven. Uh, but basically, it's just going to be myself and another content creator through all the different positions, and we're going to rank them. We're going to rank them to uh, to see our opinion. Obviously, you guys jump in the comment section uh, and let us know your thoughts, because obviously, everyone's got different perspectives. Everyone's got different thoughts. And at the end of the day, guys, this video is just kind of what we think going into the 2024 season and putting together a whole range of different factors that you guys will obviously get to listen to but as i said it's not just myself it will be alongside another content creator which is norman here from sports shed tv how we doing man i'm doing well blaze how are you Mate, I'm ready to rock and roll you. That's what I'm ready to do because I love this series. Every single year, I actually look forward to doing this because it really gets you back into the, the 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 mind space for the NRL because you have to go through every single one. You can't hide from it. And this series is not for the faint of heart because you have to go through every single player. So, you know, what, are, you ready, are you ready to rock and roll? I'm ready to rock and roll. I was excited to to be welcomed back on. I think we did the we did the halfbacks last season, which was um interesting. And I watched back on that video actually towards the back <laughs> of the season to see how it went. Not not bad at all. A few surprises, but not bad at all. So can you hear what everyone thinks in the comment section as well? Um, once we get cracking, but 41 players, there's a lot to get through. I'm I'm ready to get to get started, and we'll see how um how like minded we are. I guess it was. Um, it, it, was it kind of usually yeah, it kind of usually goes like you. But you don't usually have a polar opposite thought process. Like you're not going to have someone say elite and then the other person say not that great. It usually is relatively within the same range. Sometimes you can get some people say bottom of quality and top of the do the job and then you kind of work your way to it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, we did halfbacks last year. I think the only one that I can remember was that we had a conversation about Toby Sexton and Tanner Boyd. And I think we ended up putting Toby above Tan. And then Toby has obviously gone to the doggies and uh, Tan has obviously been doing what he's doing for the Titans. So I think that uh, I think that was the only one that we probably got wrong last <laughs> Yeah, probably last the only one we got wrong. And I still think Sexton could be a better player, just maybe just hasn't lived up to the potential yet. But Tan yeah, Boyd looks yeah. like a much yeah, better player. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's my boy Tan we're talking about here. Man. We, can't <laughs> be, we can't be in solid Titans. But just quickly before we do get started, obviously let everyone know kind of what you do for the community uh, at Sports we, we have had Josh and Adrian that are slapped on the Bulldogs and the Manly draft here um but you know let everyone know what sports show tv do yep so obviously we're a sports social media page run by the three of us josh adrian and myself and we do a lot of work for the community the whole point of our page is just to get the community's voice and opinion out there we do a lot of fan tv interviews at, at games and we've picked up a lot of junior content uh towards the back end of last year and it's something we're going to specialize in this year junior footy games soccer games um be quite diverse boys and girls we're in doing some try to get some netball games involved like literally everyone who plays sport on the junior side as well try to give them a platform interview them and, and see how things go and also a big thing that we do is the the charity match which is That's kind of something one. that we've been known for um since doing the first one last year so that'll be um on the 3rd of february at lidcom oval so you can grab your tickets to the live stream and to and tickets to the actual event in in the link in bio and i'm sure it's in your bio too so it'll be in the description yeah, yeah or in the description perfect i'd love to see everyone there and if you can't make it watch the live stream because you're going to be commentating so i'm keen to oh we'll be commentating so don't you worry myself and clarky we're going to be slapping up like uh i haven't we haven't really spoken about it publicly but it's going to be a much improved stream this year guys we've got some really big big things planned so we won't go into it too much but like i said the description uh is where you can find the links that will the uh link to the actual stream be available by when this comes out um I'm hoping for I'm hoping for it to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, no, it won't. It won't be. It'll be okay, so we'll, under our bio in in, a, in coming weeks or or something like just that. Just obviously, guys, stay stay tuned. Um, I'll put it in further descriptions uh, for the the team makers and whatnot as well uh, when that comes out. But I will drop the link to the actual tickets to the game to the match, which is going to be amazing uh, in the description. So definitely yeah. go and click on that. But all right, man. It's time to knuckle down. Time to get our thinking caps on. And uh, let's start with the list. Are you ready? I'm I'm very ready. I got my the lucky ball with me here to, to help out. So um I'm ready, mate. We're all locked in. 
Cheers, guys. Prepared because he is a Roosters fan and we will have to listen to some dribble very, very soon, just like you'll have to listen to some dribble about the Titans as well. So that's just kind of what you get here. But the first player that we're going to be starting off with here is the Tigers, Appy Site, Godoy Sal. I think this is a pretty simple one here for me, man, and I'm going to put him where I think he should go. But what are your thoughts on Appy Site, Godoy Sal? The Appy Godoy Sal is probably... Oh. He's one of my my favorite hookers to watch, to be honest. And I, I actually backed him to be the the starting hooker for for Origin in the season that just went. I actually I rate him so highly. I think on the ball, off the ball, I think he's smart. The, just how quick he is around the ruck as well, and just for a little guy, the effort that he puts in is just ridiculous. Um, I think even though Penrith won the comp without him, there's still a much better side with him at nine. So, in my opinion, even though he's at the Tigers and they didn't have the best G, I don't know if what what you're gonna do if you're thinking of putting him in quality, but I actually think he's an elite hooker of our game. Mate, I moved him into elite within two seconds of even moving him. He, for me, is one of the most intelligent players that I've seen in rugby league. He killed it at Manly, um, killed it at the Rabbitohs too, won a premiership with the Rabbitohs, uh, won multiple premierships with the Panthers, and then now at the Tigers. Although the Tigers are awful, he is one of their shining lights in this team. And I don't think that's debatable amongst anybody. So uh, for me, he goes straight to, the, to elite. Uh, I don't even know that. might be the first time I've ever started off with a player who goes straight into elite, but he yeah. deserves it. He's absolutely phenomenal. And uh, yeah, he, he deserves to be into elite. But all right, let's move now into the next man, which is Billy Walters here for the Brisbane Broncos. Now, just before we get Norman's opinion on this one, I will say I've said this for many years now that the, well, the last couple of years specifically, that the Broncos are a hooker away from winning the competition. And that obviously does shine down on Billy Walters, who is the hooker there. Now, the Broncos did get to the grand final in 2023, and that was phenomenal. And Billy Walters did step it up a little bit. Uh, but at the end of the day, I also do think that the whole team as a whole really kind of pushed forward, and that really did help him, which was great. So, look, I don't think that... Um, I don't think that he's going to go into one of the the, the top, top tiers, but I, I do think that for me, I'd be putting him into the top end and do the job. To be honest with you, if you take Billy Walters out of that side and you put any other hooker in, I still think Broncos make the final because of the team they had. I don't think he was as impactful as other I think hookers. they win the grand final, mate, if, they, if you have a different hooker. Yeah. Oh, look, I don't think it was a reason why they lost. I, I, don't, I want to go as no, far I agree. as that. But I, I, I'd say, he, yeah, he can definitely definitely do the job. But I don't think he's as good as what some Brisbane fans make him out to be. And I don't know if it's because of the whole coach's son sort of thing. I don't want to put that stigma around him. But mm. he's definitely, I wouldn't say he's elite and I wouldn't say he's quality. But, you know, you can't be not that great and, and make a grand final. So I'd definitely put him in the... in the Yeah, I, I think coming into 2023, we probably would have had him in the not that great category. I didn't really rate him. I do think that he did the job. And again, you can't make the grand final and not do the job. And he is a part of this fine. Uh, but at the end of the day... Uh, I'm not blaming Billy Walters for the grand final loss by any means. I think that he did help them to get there. But I do think that, for example, when the Ben Hunt rumors were around, if you chuck Ben Hunt into that team, they win the grand final, right? They they, they go on to do that, in my personal opinion. You're up by 16 points with 15 minutes to go. You just have someone who's a little bit smarter. I know Adam Reynolds was a big reason for it. But at the end of the day, I just think that you get a, a, a bit more of a quality hooker in there. And yeah, I still maintain the Broncos are a hooker away from winning the comp. So, um, And I will actually want to point this out. I didn't say this at the beginning of the video. If there's a player watching this, if I know that players do watch these, I get told about it. Please don't be offended if we put you in not that great or, or down in the lower categories. One, it's just our opinion, but two, use it as motivation, man. Use it as a, a real reason to kind of push yourself to prove us wrong, man. I'm happy to be proven wrong. Um, and if Billy Walters is going to win the grand final this year, congratulations, you've proven me wrong. But I think that yeah. so you're happy to put him in to do the job. I'm happy as well, and you know, if any any uh, any players are are knowing, just know that I'm I'm proven uh, proven to be shit. That's why um, I'm not <laughs> on the field. So don't take anything personally, guys. Hey, not necessarily, mate. Because guess what? You're going to be on the charity match, and you're going to absolutely crush it. So uh, prove. Yeah. Yeah. Are you what position are you playing? I'm playing on the wing, and I'm a goal kicking specialist, as you saw last year. So, um, uh, mate, if I'm you hot. were Listen here, if you're a goal kicking specialist, don't talk to me because Tanner Boyd is the man. Tanner Boyd is the anyway. We're not we're getting off topic. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting off topic. Gee whiz, Tanner Boyd doesn't miss that guy. All right, next up here, let's get to another Broncos hooker, which is Blake Moser, who has kind of been knocking on the door for a little bit now. Um, and you obviously hear a lot of good raps about the Bronco uh, from Broncos fans and whatnot. What are your thoughts on Blake Moser? Yeah, I hear a lot, yeah, obviously a lot of good raps. Um, follow him on our socials on Sportshed, actually. Interesting bloke seems to get around the first graders quite often. So surely he's he'll be playing first grade sometime soon. You'd hope for it to be this year, this upcoming season. Um, I'd still say uh, because I can't put him in not that great because he hasn't played like mm. you know, we haven't seen him come in and, and play first grade or anything. So I 
I would have to put him in the unproven category, but I'd put him right at the top given that he's played the, you know, junior rep, junior rep size, seen him play origin. So definitely. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly have a, have a little look ski here to see um, how many games he has, play, has played. Because if he's played less than 20, then, oh, he's only played one game. So he's definitely unproven. There's, he's, he's got, the yeah. yeah. I, you know, it's because he hasn't played consistent games. You can't, I don't think you can put him in not that great or do the job because we don't know if he can do the job. So you definitely have to be an unproven, but because of what we've seen in the junior years, I put him right at the top of unproven. Yeah. Well, right now he's the only one in unproven. So he's at the yeah. top and he's also at the bottom. Um, <laughs> but uh, we'll see how that one goes. And I think that as well, we'll get to this list and we'll see that there are some players that are actually here that although they haven't played many NRL games, also have been around the system for quite some time. So you still yeah. can rank them. Um, and we'll get to one of them actually in, in just a little bit. But th- like there are guys that can still be ranked even though they've played less than 20 games overall. Uh, but all right, let's get now into the Cronulla Sharkies. And it is a Blake Braley here. I'm actually thinking about bringing him into my super coach this t- uh, team this year. That's how hyped yeah. I am on Blake. Um, you know, nice little cheapy there, but that's uh, for another day of the super coach stuff. He is a quality hooker for mine. I think that he... Uh, is a guy that is not going to be the star of the team. He's not going to be the guy like a Nico Hines or whatnot, but he is going to to be a very integral part of the team if the team is going to be successful. And I think the Sharkies, this is a must-do year for them, a must-do year after the last couple. So for me, I'd put him into quality. Yeah, we've seen Brayley play the full 80 and be a standout. Um, he's had had a bad run of injuries here and there. So is his brother, to be honest. Um, I think they've both been quite quite unlucky. But he's a staple of that side and you wouldn't want to replace him with anyone else. I think he slots in quite well. I feel like sometimes in, in big games, he goes missing in the sense of like, you know, you see another hooker like sort of break through the line or do something super creative. But I feel like he does his job and he does his job really well that mm. I would put him in the... in the. He probably will end up going low end of quality. He won't. He probably won't go to the top end. But I think he would be yeah. probably one of the last two in the, in the quality section. But if I had to pick between having... Uh, Billy Walters and 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 Bradley, my side, are picking Bradley every day of the week. So I'm definitely putting him in their quality because I do think he's a level above mm. uh, Walters. In saying that, like you just touched on, I do think he'll end up on the end of quality, but he's still definitely above do the job. So happy to pop him in quality. And I'm excited for 2024. Like I said, I'm getting them into the super coach. I think the Sharkies, they're an attacking team. I think they'll be on the up. So uh, they have to be on the up. They, yeah. they have a good team. They, they, they should be a lot better. Than if not, it's going to be a tough few years for them. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about tough. Like, this team's no, I'm not going to start going on Titans rant. I'm not, I'm not going to start the Titans rant, but we're gonna, don't worry. We're coming. You wait till we get to Sammy Bells and Chris Randall. All right. Next up here, I'm going to let you take the floor. I'm going to have to probably bring you down a notch, but we do have Brandon yep. Smith here with the Roosters. Have the floor. I doubt you. I'll doubt you'll have to bring me down a notch. It's because I'm, um, you know, obviously a massive Sydney Roosters fan, but since pushing on with the, uh, with the sports shed page, I've learned that, um, you know, being biased doesn't really get you that far. Obviously, <laughs> we know who we support and everything like that, but look, I'm a black and white sort of person. Um, I've, I've always said, I prefer the block of cheese at, at 13 and I'll, I'll continue to say that until mm-hmm. I can see him as a fantastic nine. Um, right now, I think he's a quality nine. Like you don't win Dali M hooker of the year. I don't care if you're playing the best club or the worst club, you don't win, you know, hooker of the year award if you're not a quality hooker. But do I think he's elite? Definitely not. When I think of Coruscant, I think of Cheese. I'm like, oh, I'd rather Coruscant 9 and Cheese 13 any day of the week. So the fact that I'm going Coruscant automatic 9 means that I can't even consider Brendan Smith. I would not put him in the elite category. Sure, he's quality, big hits. Doesn't have a big motor on him, unfortunately. Hopefully that picks up this year. His selection out of dummy half, his passing selection, few forward passes, fair few knock-ons, a bit scrappy. I know he's had a few injuries. He had the hand issue, new team, but... To be honest, this year will be not make or break for him, but in, if we're talking about the team maker, make or break, if he really kills it this year, we could probably put him in elite for next year. But at this point in time, I'd definitely put him in the quality category. Um, just because of experience in the big games played, I'd actually put him ahead of Blake Braley, but I, I can't put him in elite. All right, so I, I, I understand where you're coming from with a lot of that. Um, the only reason that I would slightly disagree is because I think that if you're basing it off of his history, then he's absolutely in quality, right? But if you're basing it off how he did at the Roosters in 2023, then I personally believe that he'd be going to the top and do the job. Now, it's hard because you have to kind of figure out a, a, a good mix here because that was just a really poor year from him. And, and for me, again, I agree with you as well in the, regards to Brandon Smith being at 13. I think that's always been the position that I've loved for him. Obviously, he did that at the Storm as well. Um, and I, I just think that he's kind of lost his position there with New Zealand as well. Like they've got, is it Jerry Marshall King, they're nine now? Yeah, JMK came in towards the end, yeah. 
Yeah, so Marshall King has come in now. He's lost that spot. And obviously, there's a lot of criticism of him at the Roosters in 2023. So I think that I would have been putting him... I think we put him into the top of quality when he was at the Storm and, and breaching the elite category. But p- for me, I would personally, right this very second, be putting him at the top of do the job. Really? Well, I didn't think you'd have to bring me down there. I, I still think it's a bit better than a bit better than do the job. Um, just I think his defensive qualities are quite good. Um, quite underrated because everyone talks about him like running hard and things like that. But I, I think in defense, he's so much better than so many other people. And he really held held our line together in those last few games. I think when we went like eight in a row und- undefeated before the, the game. I think I'd be, I'd be happy to put him into the bottom of quality um, so that we're kind of in a, a bit of a mix. So it's still in quality um, and, yeah. and kind of gets that rep. But right this very second, I do think that Blake Braley has been... And also Blake is the... Like Blake is the, ugh, I don't know. Like I, I just think that Brandon Smith has the potential and has the kind of ability above Blake for sure, hundred percent. But I just think that right at this very second, going into the 2024 season, Brandon Smith didn't do enough last year and is obviously at the Sydney Roosters now, not Melbourne Storm. So we can't really, you know, talk about his Storm form. We can only kind of talk realistically about the club that he's at. Would you just agree with that? Yeah, no, fair enough. I'm happy to put him behind Brayley. I just, I think, I just think he's above the, I just think he's above the do the job category, and I. I think I saw a difference when when like Turpin was playing, even though he came in playing good for the for the Roosters. Then we moved around with Sandon Smith and things like that. Then when Brandon Smith came back on, you notice a bit of an impact and the way the forwards were running off him and, and he was using that just shows that he could do the, the job of being a hooker a bit better than everyone else, which is why I'd still put him in that quality section. But yeah, happy mm. for him to be the back of quality. Um well, you might, we, we may move him around the longer that we go. Um, but just for, I think, yeah, for the time being, at least that's a bit of a middle ground. I do understand where you're coming from, and I, I am happy to still have him under the quality tag. Uh, but just for the time being, I think it, it would be quite low considering some of the guys that would probably go above him as well. Yeah. Um, okay. But all right, let's move now into the bottom of the squeals. It is Brendan Hands here, who uh, kind of got the main role for the Eels now that, uh, what was it, Hodgson? Josh Hodgson yeah. uh, obviously retired. Uh, what are your thoughts on Brennan Hands? Because he has had a, a, a bit of time to to kind of grasp the, the hooker role now. Yeah, I thought he came in and, and I thought he did a fantastic job. And when I say fantastic job, I've always said this about the Eels. And I know this isn't a video where we're going to be talking about one team in specific, but they've got a fantastic team, one through to 17. It's just their centers and wings that they seem to butcher so often. I think Penasini is the only good player out of their two centers and two wingers. So the fact that they signed Hodgson and he got injured and I knew he was a bit old, it was just a bit weird because everything else was clicking for them. So... Um, he, he came in, I think he really steadied the ship there. He, he held his way in defense and he's, I think it's like passing selection at dummy half was actually really good. So I, I, I actually, I rate him. I, I don't think he's fantastic or he's shown us enough to be like amazing, but I, I definitely think he will end up at the back end of the do the job because I, I don't think I can put him in not that great. And I think he's proven himself to, to come into a starting team at a team, which has a, a, like a massive fan base and high expectations and underperformed. I think he was one of the better players this year. Yeah, look, I, I, I'll agree. I, I, I was actually kind of nervous there for a little bit because I thought you were going to try and say quality, uh, which I don't think that he's at no. that level yet. Um, I was trying to figure out whether I'd put him above Billy Walters or below Billy Walters. But I do think that, you know, Billy has still gotten to the grand final. Um, I think that Brennan Hands was one of the, I, I guess, more stabilizers in that Parramatta Ill side. I do think that you probably missed out on Mike Sibo there, but he hasn't been great for a few years by, uh, as well. Yeah, no, I'm, definitely missed out on him. I'm calling Sibo out, man. I mean, I'm sure he didn't. <laughs> I, hey, I think, it's my Fijian yeah. brother, man. He's my Fijian brother, but man, <laughs> he's, got to, he's got to pick it up, man. He does. Absolutely, he does. Um, and we'll obviously be talking about that on the wing as till as it comes. But I'd personally put Brennan Hands below Billy Walters for the time Dang. being, and this will be a huge year in 2024. So we're putting him below? When you say below, you're putting him on, on the right side of him. Of Billy, yeah, right? right side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Uh, basically like a snake like this kind of deal. Yeah, and then yeah. goes up. So, okay. um, all right, let's move now into the Melbourne Storm. And we've got Bronson Garlic here, a guy that doesn't really get a great deal of starts, but does play in the team uh, quite a bit nowadays. Uh, he's not obviously the hooker because Harry Grant is there. And we've seen him in multiple positions, actually. The hooker, I think he played a bit of halfback and a bit of 5 eight at points when Jerome or, yeah. or Munster were injured. Uh, what are your thoughts on Garlic? Garlic came from Union, didn't he? I'm not 100% like too sure, but the Storm seem to have a lot of ex-union players to be yeah. fair come through their ranks. Seems like it. And I think because he's been so sporadic and played in different positions, I, I don't think he's proven as a hooker. So I feel it's disrespectful to put him in not that great. But until I can see him play a hooker like maybe 10 games in a row, whether it's off the bench or starting, I can't put him there. I'll put him in unproven and I'm definitely putting um, him behind Blake there. 
Yeah, I put him behind Blake. I'll just quickly go and have a look and see kind of how many games he has played. Uh, because if it, if it's if it's getting up there, up there, then it, it's a bit weird. Oh, we also got to see how many games he's sort of played at hooker. Like, I... yeah, because he has played multiple positions, as we said. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he has played. He's played twenty two games. Um, actually, if I go into rugby league project, it'll actually tell me. It'll tell me specifically how many games he has played. So oh. garlic. Uh, but, 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 but garlic search that rugby league project is such a great website man it is such a great website uh so garlic has played in the hooker position uh okay if i click on error where, where is positions their positions played there we go positions played he has played hooker 19 times so he actually has played 19 times second row 60 times what Oh no, what's this going on here? No, sorry, hooker six times, bench 16 times. So actually, he hasn't played, he hasn't actually come off and played anything in the halves. He actually, every time he's come on, he has come and played the hooker. But with that being said, he's won five games and one and one loss there through his six starts as a hooker. So I think that I I don't know. Yeah, it's it's we'll put we'll put him into unproven. I'll agree with you. Unproven. We'll put him into un, unproven. But yeah, there's yeah. definitely, yeah, definitely next year we'll have to... There's room to improve. Yeah, there's room to improve. I think he's on the brink of the amount of games we utilise uh, for how many games he's played. So we'll put him in on improvement for now. But I do have Blake Moser being a little bit higher than than Garlic. Um, so we'll use that. Yeah. All right. Now we get to the real team here, sir. Now we're talking. This is my boy, Chrissy Randall. Absolutely love this man. This is the Titans fan base adores Chrissy Randall. He came in from that trade with Greggy Martiu uh, to the Knights and we got Chris Randall. People complained about it. They said, oh, how are we getting to Greg Martiu? You know, we've got massive wing depth. Uh, but we got Chris Randall back and he has been an absolute spectacular signing for the club. However, the hooker role specifically, I think that I'm not going to be putting him into the quality section. I'd be putting him into the do the job section, but I would put him at the top because he's more of a utility. He can play nine, front row, back row, lock, literally anywhere. And he's a quality player, man, absolutely quality. But I just think that when it comes to the hooker position specifically, I'd be putting him into the do, do the job category around the Billy Walters mark. If he was a 14, if this was like a, about a 14 thing, I'd definitely put him in quality. But just given that I feel like you've got a better nine in, at, at your club, and I feel like he's an, he's an awesome 13, just seeing him in rip and tear when he plays in that position, I would put him in to do the job because he's obviously better than not that great. And right now, I would leave Billy Walters at the front of do the job, like just simply because of the experience the season he had playing in that final. I believe he kicked that 40 20 as well, which is kind of crucial. Mm. Um, I'd, I'd definitely keep Billy Walters at number one and do the job for now, but I'd definitely um, slot Randall in right beside him. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I put Chrissy Randall above Brennan Hands, but below below Billy Walters. I think that yeah, again, as you said, if we're talking like a fourteen or a fifteen, because fourteen is usually kind of like a backs utility, but fifteen is what I guess we use Chrissy Randall as the the forwards utility. So yeah, yeah. Jackman to do the job there, and that's yeah. Th there's just sometimes players that will be and do the job, even though they're great at their job, they do the job, and, and it's just kind of how it is. So that's what Chrissy Randall is to me. He's just a guy that just does not stop, man. I love that man. Uh, probably we'll have an interview with him on the channel very, very soon. Uh, but all right, let's move now into the Broncos again. Corey Pates here, uh, who is another one of the Broncos fans are obviously talking up quite a bit. Uh, you, they've got so many hookers here because there's another hooker, I think, later on that we have to do. Yes, movie. So what's your thoughts on, on Corey Pates? I'm not a fan. I feel like Corey Pax has had a fair bit of hype and I don't feel like he's delivered. Now, you can say things like, oh, you know, how many games has he played? You know, like, are you really going to compare him with the people in the unproven category or the do the job category? Like, how would you know whether or not to, to put him in the, in the not that great section? But I don't think I've heard, like, I've heard so many people speak about speak about him and, and, and things like that, but I just don't feel like whether Broncos isn't the right fit for him or I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but he's... He's played over 40 games. Mm. Um, yeah, 44 games. Where were we? Yeah, because I, I know he's been around for a couple of seasons now. So I just feel like if he was good enough at doing the job, he'd be not a household name, but I'm pretty sure everyone in the community would be well aware of him and his traits. But I can't pinpoint an area of his game that I think, oh, wow, that's that, that's fantastic. Or he's clearly doing a good job there because he's got a good record, um, whether it's like in, you know, in terms of tackling, setting up tries, scoring tries, or you know some sort of specialist aspect from the hooker position. I'd put him in not that great. And it doesn't mean that he can't not do the job, but I feel like when you've almost played 50 games and you're still not playing... You're still struggling for that reputation. Randall, there. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you're going to go at the top of not that great for me. Yeah, I agree. And, and he might not be at the top of not that great. But, yeah, I think that he had a lot of reps. It, he hasn't really got it going. 44 games is quite a lot of games. Like, you get into your 50-game mark, which is a milestone, and you're still not really cracking it. So I agree with you. I, I'm pretty happy to put him into not that great category there. If you're watching this, Corey, motivate through it. But all right, let's move now into Damian Cook here for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. And this is an interesting one, man, because he has okay. been elite for a very long time. He was one of, I actually thought he was the best hooker for, uh, there was one year, there was one specific year, but he was obviously competing with Cameron Smith at one point as well, though. Um, but Damian Cook is an electrifying hooker but he's also not what he used to be which um concerns me he's lost that new south wales spot to api saigoto sow obviously um and and damien cook is obviously looking towards he's he doesn't have that same spark that he, he once had would you still be happy to put damien cook into the elite category or are you bumping him down to quality because there's no there's no other way you can put him you can't put him into the job but you he is in one of those two mm. do you have a coin that i could flip mm. if the it's a tough one with Cookie, isn't it? And even taking the bias out of it, him being a Rabbitohs uh, player, it's I've always had great respect for Cookie, how he carries himself on and off the field, what he's done for for club, state, country. I just don't know. I don't know. I feel like Rabbitohs obviously had a disappointing year. Was he one of their better players? I can't say he was. I, I if we're basing it off last year, he's definitely not in the elite category. He, you could put him in the in the higher ends of quality. I still feel like he had a better season than Brandon Smith. And I will Pop- I will just jump in there and say that this isn't just from my personal viewpoint. This isn't just last year. I think it's been a couple of years running now. Well, like I think for sure. Yeah, I think it was maybe probably twenty twenty or even maybe around that or twenty nineteen where he was kind of at his peak, and then it's just kind of been. You know, he's got that reputation from the past and people still see him as that guy. But he'll have like an electric game against the Doggies, I think it was last year, where he scored tr- three tries. Maybe that was the year before. I don't know. But that yeah. is like one in a few games. And it's just like, yeah, I don't think that he's currently at the elite level that he once was. I would personally put him at the top of quality just because we know what he can produce. But also, he, he yeah, I just usually... He's he he a distinguished club and he still plays at a high level. Like, it's not like he has bad games. It's just his, his impact has dropped off. And when you're looking at... App- you know, you got Api Corusa there and you look at Damian Cook, you're like, oh, they shouldn't be next to each other. So I'm happy to put him at the top of quality. Yeah, it's just it's just such a weird thing to see Damian Cook not being an elite after all these years. It's just so weird. But I, in the same sense, people will more than likely understand where we're coming from. If you have a different opinion, jump into the comment section. Well, it'd be uh, the but, same thing, and not to touch on Roosters players or a different position, but it'd be the same thing, I'm sure, when you do your fullback video. I'm not sure if he even... Tedesco, yeah. I put Tedesco, I don't know where he's going to be. I might have to watch that one uh, just for, for educational purposes. But <laughs> I'd put Penny at the top of quality and take him off off elite after if we're just going off last season going into this season so i, I feel like the same things happened with cookie yeah yeah absolutely uh i, I think that uh, that's a, a, a topic for another yeah, day but like, i i, I do just, think that just a point of reference i don't think that cook has dropped off as much as tedesco but with that being said yeah i don't know we'll i'll talk about that in another video but yes good comparison uh, but all right let's move now into the canberra raiders and it is danny levi here who uh, has been around for a very long time, uh, has done some solid work throughout his time, but also I think he's kind of getting on in his career and also is at a club that he's more than likely, like they've got Tommy Starling there, they've got Zach Wolford there. I, I really don't know how much footy he's actually going to play at the race, to be fair. Uh, you know, maybe at one point of his career, I probably would have put him into the, the do-the-job category. Um, and I actually would have put him into the do-the-job. And at one point of his career, he was pretty decent. But I do think right this very second, I'd be putting him to the top end of not that great. You can either put him at the very back end of do the job or the very top end of, of not that great. And it's just simply because he's been around. I'm pretty sure he's played over 100 games, played for a couple of clubs. I just think defensively, I actually think he's a really good hooker. I don't think he offers much out of attack. You don't see something super special about his passing. But I just know you put him in there, he'll, he'll do the job defensively. Like he'll, he'll be sound. So I'm, I'm actually happy to put him at the, at the very back end, just given his experience and how long he's been around for and the fact that he can still hold up in the defensive line. I'm happy to put him at the very end of do the job. But yeah, like you said, since he hasn't really cemented himself anywhere as such, I get it if you want to put him in not that great. But then I look at who we've got in do the job and not that great. And I feel like he still aligns more with the back end of do the job. 
Yeah, happy to, I'll, happy I'll, to... no, I'll, I'll agree with you. I do think that if you're going to put, if push comes to shove and you need a hooker to play, I do think Danny Levi will do a job for you. I don't think that he'll do an incredible job for you attacking-wise, defensively maybe solid, but I think that he is actually probably the epitome of a Raiders player right now. The Raiders don't really have, aren't really known for attack, they're known for defense, and they're just a grind team. And that's exactly what Danny Levi probably is. So um, I think he yeah. played a little bit for Samo as well. Um, and, and yeah, look, he, he's he's to the job. He definitely is to the job. So I'll agree with you on that one. But I would put him at the back, at the bottom just because he doesn't give you that kind of extra flair and also mm-hmm. isn't starting for this club right now. Um, but all right, let's move now into the Waz, the New Zealand Warriors. We've got Dylan Walker here, who is kind of like a Christy Randall, but for the Warriors. He plays pretty much everywhere. Uh, obviously, he's played for a couple of clubs now. Uh, what, what would you be thinking about Dylan Walker? Yeah, very. it's funny you say Chris Randall. That's exactly what I was thinking of. And I'm like, oh, does he go before him? Does he go after him? I think he's super experienced and sp- He's just not a specialist. He hasn't found his position where he can come in and cement himself. So he'll definitely do the job. I can't put him in not that great. He'll definitely do the job. But I feel like Randall's a better hooker than him. And I actually feel like Brandon Hands is a better hooker than him too. If we're just going off the hooker position. If you slot him in the back row in the forward pack, I think he can do even more of a job and be better. But I'd actually slot him in between Brandon uh, Brandon Hands and um, Danny Levi there. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty happy with that one, to be fair. Um, again, a very similar player to Chris Randall in the sense that he is more of a kind of utility player off the bench um, and, and plays multiple. But yeah, I would agree with you. I think that I would prefer Chris Randall or, or Brennan Hands over Dylan Walker there. But if you go into the back row, he'd probably be a little bit higher. But yeah, I, I, I agree with that one there. Um, all right, we move now again into the Warriors. We've got Freddie Lussick here, who... I think he came from the Eels and he was... Came from the Roosters as well. The Roosters as well. And now into the Warriors. Yeah. I, th- I think that we're probably thinking the same thing here. He's had time to try and, you know, cement himself a position, but just really hasn't been able to get it going. He's behind Wade Egan. Um, and oh, I probably would get a, the nine spot over Dylan Walker. However, I, I, I would personally be putting uh, Lussick probably into not that great category uh, around. I, I, and I'll probably just put him above Corey Pace. He debuted for us a few years ago and then since getting uh, slapped around by um, Taylor May in that boxing match, he's never been the same on the rugby league field. So I'm happy to put him in not that great because he's been around for, for a fair bit of time. He's played enough games now. He's probably played between around 35 games, I'd say. Um, I don't know if you want to fact check that, but um, I know he's played at least like a full season's worth and he's bounced around a couple of clubs. So I feel like if he was able to do the job, we'd see him more consistently. So I'm happy to put him not that great Would you put him at the front of not that great or would you put him last? I'd put him above Corey Pakes for the sole purpose that I I do think that we'll probably see more of him than we will see Pakes. And I do think that Blake Moser is probably going to, has more of an impact than than Pakes. And that will push him even down further because Billy Walters is obviously the guy they've got. So I would be happy to put Freddie Lussick there because you do see him at times. Um, when Wade Egan is done, Wade Egan's injured, you'll see Freddie Lussick more than likely come to that nine so they can still utilize the utility version of Dylan Walker. Um, so, yeah, I'd put him, put him at the top end and not that great. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's a bit of a much of a muchness, really. Uh, but uh, do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I'd agree. All right, there we go. All right, let's move into the Manly Seagulls now. And we've got Gordon Chan Kam Tong, a chief potentially for super coach this year. Uh, and, and might start to implement himself a bit more. There are some wraps on him. I, I think that he's got to go straight into the unproven category uh, really because bad. obviously he hasn't played, but I do think that there is an opportunity for him to to grow, especially with Manly may start to, and we'll get to Lachlan Croker in a bit, but you know Manly may start to move away from him um, for a guy that could be electric. I don't know what Gordon Chen Kam Tong can do, right? So would you agree with what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know what he can do. He, I know he's played a couple games. I think he played two games. He won both, and I remember him scoring, and Cherry told him he can kick the conversion. So um, definitely put him in the unproven category. I'd put him... I think Blake Moses got such high raps on him that I'd probably put Gordon second. Yeah, is that because the Broncos have such a large fan base, though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it because... It's like with the dogs, right? They've got a large fan base, and they're they will just buddy shove it down your throat that they've got the, the, the best players in the history of players. And Broncos are the same. Yeah. Bronco, oh, Broncos don't do it as aggressively as them though. But with that being said, Broncos have such a large fan base that they can manipulate, I guess, viewpoints on their young players. Um, so I, I think that, yeah, Gordon Chan Kam Tong doesn't have the same reps as a Blake Moses. So I'm happy to put him into second, but I yeah. would, I, I would be interested. It wouldn't surprise us if, if he ends oh, up. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if Gordon Chen Kam Tong actually is uh, above him, to be honest with you. But again, that's kind of off of uh, meta, really. Like, <laughs> that's off of meta. Yeah. 
Uh, but all right, let's move now into the Dolphin, and it is Harrison Graham, another player that I'm pretty certain is just going to go straight into unproven. Straight into unproven, but when he did play, boy, was I impressed by him. I don't know how closely you followed him play, but he was a tackling machine. Mm. He was a tackling machine. Definitely unproven, but I can see him. Well, it depends how many minutes and how many games he gets to play. I don't know how many. Well, you know, Jeremy Marshall King was out injured. That's the only reason why he got to play. So this time next year, he could still be in the unproven category. But I think I'm happy to obviously put him there. I think that's where he belongs. But I think we can see him be one of those players that skip the not that great and go straight to do the job um, when the time comes, when he finds where where he needs to be. But yeah, happy to put him in, in unproven. Um, I'd, I'd put where are you putting him? him? Where are you putting him in unproven? <laughs> I'd put him in third there, but but I understand why we're going to keep um we're going to keep going there. So I'm happy to put him fourth, where I'm pretty sure that's where you think he belongs. Yeah, with the unproven category, guys, like it's just going to be it's, it's all it's off of good. potential, really. So there's no real order. It's just what we potentially could think of based off of anything. I don't know, but um, it usually will come off of raps that we hear from uh, the, the general consensus of the fan base, I guess. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so let's move on now and we'll go into the Melbourne Storm and it is Harry Grant, Mr. Haroldinho uh, for the Melbourne Storm. He's obviously going to go into elite. I think he won the hooker of the year uh, in 2023, didn't he? I didn't think that he was uh, as spectacular as the raps were for him last year, but I do think that he's still the best hooker in the game, absolutely. Yeah, I was just pulling up um, his, his stats for the year and I... Seriously, it, I know. I just is there a better hooker than him? There's not. There's not. Like he just does it all the time. I and mean, even when you think Melbourne are down now, you think, oh, like they're not having the best year. Munster's having a bit of an off game, or what's going to happen? And then Harry Graham would just do something like defensively in attack. He's reads like having Cameron Smith just be his mentor at Melbourne for so long, and him doing that whole interchange thing with Brendan Smith while he was there, and then now he's left, and it's just like, all right, mate, you run the show. And even the star power of Pappenhausen being out because of injury and, like, you've seen just Harry just spark it. Like, I'm like, the guy's incredible. He's as tough as nails. That little dink in the in-goal area from a little grubber, like, anything like that. How many tries did he score this year? And Like, he, mm. he's just fantastic. And I think he was a huge part of the reason why Queensland won the Origin Series too, where sometimes he doesn't take the hype or the credit and don't get that smoke off your face, mate. <laughs> like, he's, he's seriously... Queensland, ah. he can be He can be the difference. Like, you know the guy that you don't talk about, but, like, they make a difference or you take them out of the equation, like, oh, shit, the game's so different? That's mm-hmm. Harry Grant. There's no better hooker. I think he's the most complete hooker. And I think if we see Coruscant fully fit and we see the Tigers... I don't think the Tigers will ever be able to rifle the storm over the next five years, but... Well, actually, if you think about it realistically, when Harry Grant went to the Tigers for a little bit, obviously he got them to their highest position in a very long time. In not, uh, I think it was tenth actually. Oh, the Titans that's actually. Volumes. He got a standing ovation. Like that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got a standing ovation as a loaned player, as a loaned player for a single year. So Which never even existed. No one would ever would have laughed at the idea of a loan player. Like, yeah, so, yeah, definitely top of the elite category. Definitely top. Yeah, and I, I see that a lot of people do hate on um, Grant a little bit based on the fact that he's with the Storm and people don't like the Storm. Uh, there's yeah. no doubt in anyone's mind people that he like actually him. is. Yeah, yeah. And then there's obviously New South Wales fans who, who dislike on him. But, you know, the other day, Harry Grant is elite and uh, I, I didn't think that he was as spectacular as he has been in the past last year, uh, but he still was the best hooker in the game. And that tells that that speaks volumes in itself that he still is the, the best hooker in the game personally. So... Um, you know, there there is like Conroy Sow is still a fantastic hooker. I just think there is levels to it, and I think that Harry Grant is on his own level. So, um, yeah, he'll go into the top there. All right, let's move now into the next one, which is Jacob Little here from the Dragons. Uh, has also been at the Tigers uh, in the past. Uh, you know, this is um, yeah, this this one I think we're probably going to be putting into the. I'll probably say. The top of not that great, but I I don't I don't think he's as I don't think he's that phenomenal. He's not phenomenal. He's definitely going top of not that great for me because I just think he's better than Freddie Lussick and and, and Corey mm. Banks there. But I I wouldn't say he can do the job. Or I mean, like if you get shafted from the Tigers, you can't do the job respectfully. 
That's over true. That, no, you're right. You're, you're right. I wasn't expecting that, but you are right. So, um, and that's not being disrespectful that I laughed at that. But with that being said, you know, it, it is the truth. And the Dragons are in a real big struggle straight right now. Um, and I, I don't think that he is alongside the guys that we've got there and do the job. I think that would be a little bit disrespectful to the other guys there. But, um, and, and good luck to you. If you can get above the category right now this year, 2024, with this Dragons team, my God, you deserve to be there. Um, yeah. But, all right, let's move now into a guy that has been around for decades, for centuries, Jake Granville here for the North Queensland Cowboys. Um, I would just straight up say that he is the epitome of a do-the-job player. I think yeah. that he does the job at a great level. I think he's been quality in the past, you know, back around the 2015 days and whatnot. But I do think that obviously age has gotten to him now. He's more of a utility player as well um, and will come on and do his job. Um, but with that being said, I do think that his better years are obviously beyond him. And I'd personally be looking, I'd, I'd probably personally put him below to the Walker above Danny Levi, personally. Okay. I was going to ask you, do you put him in front of Randall or behind Randall? Oh, wow. You're going to put him up yeah. there? Oh, to be fair, I would put him above, I would put him above hands. No, I'd put him above know. hands. And I just mm. think Randall lately, when... When given the opportunity, I'm like, this guy rips and tears like Granville was, not in his not in his prime, but you can see like the fact that Granville's past his prime, you see that uh, Randall's on you know a, a better trajectory at the moment. So I I put I put I Randall would say play. Randall is more important to the team in the hooker position, uh, provided that obviously Sammy Verrills does go down. Uh, yeah. I think that Randall is more important to the team than, for example, if Reese Robson went down and Jake Granville came in for the nine, personally. Yeah, I'm happy to put him at three, to be honest, because I still think it'd it'd be it'd have more impact than Brandon Hands, given given his experience and what he's been able to do. And yeah, the experience is key. All his sleeves up and just goes in. Yeah, I agree. The experience is definitely the, the key factor there. But all right, let's move now into the West Tigers, and it is Jake Simpkin here. Um, geez, uh, you're never going to get a crack at the Tigers, to be completely fair, and that is just unlucky, to be completely honest with you. But uh, have we seen enough? We've seen he's been around for a couple of years, hasn't he? Yeah, I would say. He's, I feel like he's got to go not that great. I just don't know where he goes. He'd, he'd go. He'd go not that great because, like, like we're saying, yeah, if you're that great, you get more opportunity at the Tigers. I don't think he's unproven because we've seen enough of him. Mm. Uh, I'd say, I'd say Corey Pakes is better than him, so I'd put him at the at the end of not that great, to be honest. I'll agree with you. I'll, I'll agree with you. I do see more excitement out of Corey Pace, <laughs> as little as it may be, but I, I do see more excitement out of Corey Pace and Jake Simpkin. So uh, we'll, we'll chuck him down there. And it's just unlucky. Like the one position at the Tigers that is locked off right now is the hooker position. So Jake Simpkin, unfortunately, uh, can't prove us wrong, really. <laughs> it's, it's really yeah. unlucky for him. But the one position at the club that is not that great is the one that he can't really prove us wrong in because he can't play because God always is there. So uh, unlucky there for him. But, you know, if you can find a way, then feel free to. But all right, next up here, we do have Jake Turpin from the Roosters. I'll let you have your say. Yeah, um, looks like he's off to the dogs. Oh, is he? Yeah. Are the dogs now? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've moved to the dogs. I, I rated Turpin at, at Brisbane, actually. I, I thought defensively, I thought the guy's sound, like, he actually didn't miss much in tackles. Uh, he had that, you know, that real shitty haircut where you're like, oh, this guy just does nothing but makes tackles. <laughs> he had that real look to him. Um, and then I think in attack, he was he was okay. And then when Brandon Smith went down injured, we're like, oh, shit, like, here we go. His season's going to go downhill. I feel like Turpin actually steadied the ship. Obviously, Brandon Smith's, you know, a better player than him, but I feel like he was able to steady the ship quite well. So I, I, I wouldn't say that he's not that great. I feel like he's done a job everywhere he's been, but he just hasn't cemented himself as a starting hooker. So... He's been in that awkward phase where it's like, oh, I can do the job and I'm good at what I do, but I'm just not as good as those those above me. So I'm going to end up like playing around like a sort of 14 role, but I'm not that versatile. I can only actually play nine. So I would still say he can do the job because I'd, I'd say he's much better than everyone in the not that great section. Um, I'd probably put him above Danny Levi. That's probably where I'd, where I'd have him. I... Uh, I would say that I agree with you putting him into the bottom of the job. I would personally only put him below Dane Levi because of that Samoa representation that we've seen with Dane Levi um, and, and the fact that he yeah. does have that experience there. Uh, Jake Turpin is a guy that is he's fine. Like it's, he's, he's not as bad as people make him out to be, but he's, uh, for me, I do think that Samoa representation, I think Levi had, I think he played the World Cup, didn't he? Um, I think he played. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. And that, that was only. That, that way, like, you know, that's the reason why you could put him ab above Turpin. I'm, yeah. I'm, happy, I'm happy with that. I just know that Turpin, I, I would never put Turpin in not that great, even if he didn't play for the Roosters. Just seeing him at the Broncos, like, 
he was doing the job like yeah just at a very he was doing the job at a lower level but he was still very vanilla it. but he did the job yeah yeah vanilla is a great way to put it but yeah, yeah the only reason i probably put him below levi is based on that some more representation that was only a year and a bit ago it wasn't even a year and a half a year and a bit ago so yeah, cool. I'd agree. Uh, yeah all right let's move now into manly and this guy's gonna go straight to unproven is jamie humphreys here uh i don't really know much about jamie humphreys to be fair but you know I, I like i said before i don't think that the hooker role is completely locked off at manly with lock and croker there so you know he goes into unproven do you know much about him don't know much about him at all. I'd be lying if I said I knew much about him. Have I heard his name? Definitely. Have I seen any clips of him or heard how good he is or anything? No. no. So yeah, I, I think we, I think we put him into the the bottom of unproven below bronze and garlic just based on the fact that we don't know anything about him, so we can't really yeah. put it put him above guys that at least we've seen or heard um, you know things for. Uh, all right, let's move now into Jaden Beryl here from the Sharkies. This is a guy that has been around for quite some time now, uh, and and really hasn't being able to implement himself a spot in this Sharks team. Uh, you know, they've got Blake Braley there. He hasn't really even gotten a shout on the, the bench much at all. I don't think he's actually played that many games for him. But with that being said, I would still kind of be more aligned to putting him into the not that great category, just based on the fact that, you know, he has had such so many opportunities to kind of get into the team, but just has never been able to get into the team. And that's exactly what I was going to say. It's not like he's some 19, 20 year old who's come through. It's like, you know, you, you've been around long enough. You've played enough cup games or reserves or lower grades there where if you were good enough, you'd be there. So mm. you can't really put yourself in an unproven category where we've got all these young guns or people who've just signed for NRL clubs. Bro, he's, bro, he's 28 years old. Yeah. He's, tw- he's, tw- he's 28 you, you years old. Go, you can't go in unproven. You'd have to be not that great, to be honest. And so Look, I'd, put, I'd put him at the, at the back end of it just because I can, you know, we've seen Simpson play footy. I, I would put him at the bottom simply because, yeah, look, he's 28 years old. He's no young pup anymore. Hasn't actually had a game for the Sharkies, I've just seen. So he hasn't actually debuted. Um, he's kind of there and hanging around, which is at least good depth. Well, at least they've got him for depth. But with that being said, he can't go above anybody else. One, he's never played a game. And two, the age factor really heavily comes in there. So, um, yeah, we'll put him at the, the bottom and not that great. Uh, we move now into the Newcastle Knights. And it's Jaden Braley here, a guy who has been so unlucky with injuries recently, uh, obviously coming back into this Knights team this year. Touch wood that he's okay and uh, ready to rock and roll. Um, Jaden Braley is... A really, really solid hooker. Um, I think that he can definitely uh, help his team quite significantly. But I do think the injuries really do hurt his stocks quite significantly because he he has had them on a frequent basis. Um, yeah, and yeah. and I do think, as we'll get into Phoenix Crossland in a little bit, that Crossland kind of came in and did a job in, in, in that point as well, which showed that is, I don't know, I, I feel like this is a weird one here with Jaden Braley where you you would have originally wanted to put him into quality, but he's at that point now where there's been just so many injuries. I definitely can't put him in quality because of the injuries mm. and the lack of games played. He can definitely do the job. We know that for a fact, but whereabouts and do the job. I can't see him in the top half of it. I can't. I just, injuries have ruined him. And when I think of Newcastle hooker, I think of Phoenix Crossland now, and that's going to be the case for a lot of Newcastle fans and the selectors. So it's going to be a tough one for, for them in general. I, I do think that Jaden Braley will. I think Jaden Braley will start for the Knights to start of the year. Um, but I do think because I, I think, think Crossland can. And we'll get into Crossland in a second. But I we'll think he'll. Into yeah. But he'll be. I think he'll come off as a fourteen Crossland because he can play so many different positions. Um, Are we going based off because we didn't see him last year? Are we going based off last year or based off just in general going forward into this year? Because if we're it's going just kind of a collective. Yeah, I, yeah, it's a collective, but we can't really go off much off last year. Is what I'm trying to say with Jaden Braley. So, mm-hmm. I like personally. Like I would love, to, I would actually love to put him second on do the job. I genuinely would, but we haven't seen enough of him that I'm thinking he can. I'll just be, I'll be honest with one. you. No, I'll be honest with you. I, I think that when we have seen him playing, he is above Billy Walters, but we obviously haven't oh, seen him playing much. Really. But when he does play, he is above Billy Walters, and he probably will start for the Knights this year. I don't think I could put him down as low as the Danny Levi section um, based off of what we have seen from him. Um, it's basing off the combination of not seeing him last year. But if you take that out of the, take that out of the equation, I'd definitely put him second just because of the year Billy Walters had, to be honest. Well, like, yeah, yeah, we'll put him second. And I agree with you. That based on the year that Billy Walters did have, he does deserve to be 
first there. Um, I do think that by the end of this year, provided that Jaden Bradley is not injured, he will go above him. But I think for the time being, you're right. And because Chris Randall is not specifically a hooker, he's more of a utility forward for the Titans. I'm pretty happy to put Jaden Bradley above him there. But yeah, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he comes back from his injury. And I hope he does well because, you know, they, um, yeah, I, I hope he does well. But all right, let's move on now to the Dolphins. And it is Jeremy Marshall King, who obviously came from the Doggies. Uh, did well at the Doggies. Um, we didn't kind of do anything crazy, but then again, that's the Dogs. Has come to the Dolphins and absolutely did a phenomenal job, in my personal opinion, when he was on the field. I think that Jerry Marshall King, for me, uh, I, I personally put him into quality. I was going to say this is going to shock a lot of people, but it clearly won't shock a lot of people if you've said the same thing. Definitely quality. Definitely. Well, he's an international rep for New he's, Zealand now as well. He's repping, he's repping his country. He's gone from being some sort of reject at the Dogs to, wow, look what Wayne Bennett can do. And look how we changed the Dolphins. I mean, he tore us to shreds in that first game against the Chooks. And I think since then, he just had a fantastic season. Obviously, he got done by injuries, but he was on fire. He was like probably, he was a top three player for them all year up until the injury. And not only top three player, I'd, I'd go as far as saying he was a top five hooker before he got injured. But I'm thinking, I'm, I would personally think to put him above Braley and below Damien Cook. Yeah. Look, if we're going off what you said, not only last year, but but everything in general, I don't think he's got the years of experience as being a quality hooker to put in there. If you're going purely off last year, he goes above Cook for me. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, geez. That is... Well, yeah, look, if you're going pure, purely on last year, Jerry Marshall team was better than Damien Cook for, for sure. Uh, yeah. Obviously, overall, in the collective kind of thought process that we're doing, I can't put him above there because we have to include previous years but also last year and whatnot and going into 2024 um, I'd I'd say that I'd be happy to put him below Braley but I do think that right now going 2024 as a collective he is above Brandon Smith for the time being Happy to, I'm happy to agree there yeah, it's a tight, it's a tight one. It is a tough one. Um, but yeah, he could be anywhere in that collie section. And by the end of twenty twenty four, depending on how the Dolphins do and how he does, he could definitely be above Damien Cook. He could, he absolutely could. Um, I can, I can see that happening. I can see him almost jumping to the elite category next year if if Dol if Dolphins can somehow make the eight. He, he's definitely going to play a huge part in being the elite category, which I don't think they'll make the eight. Um, so I don't want to get get please no, up, but um, <laughs> please no. <laughs> You've got, you got to admit, if they do make the eight, he's going to be an integral part and he would definitely be an elite player. But I yeah, think that I don't know if I'd be able to put him into elite by the end of the year, but I definitely could see him being at the top of quality. I do think that he probably would need to do it again. Like elite is Connery Sow and Harry Grant have been doing this for years and years now. Um, and they yeah. have been at the top of the game for a while. And yeah, I think that I think you need to be like, for example, Connery Sow has been a year like Cookies, like 2020 year or 2021, where we tore um, Queensland to shreds in origin and, and Cookie was on fire. Like, if he has a year like that, I'm thinking, well... Well, have a look at it right now. Like, the two guys who are in elite are two premiership winners. Damien Cook actually hasn't won a premiership. He was with the Dogs in 2014, I believe. Um, Blake Bradley obviously hasn't. Brandon Smith has, but with that being said, you know, that's a little bit, you know, obscure comparatively. And then everyone else there hasn't won a premiership. So, uh, hasn't been the main man as the premiership. And also, yeah, was Brandon Smith... Was he was almost the main man, I'd say. He was close to getting Clive, in my opinion. Oh yeah, Jay Grant. Oh yeah, but that I was mean, well, nine of, years ago. The bloke's the bloke's overdue for retirement, so we'll, yeah, um, like nine years. ago. Yeah, that was nine years ago. But yeah, that yeah. being said, like those two guys there are clearly elite. I think that Marshall King would need to would need to be like top four or even win the premiership to actually go into elite next year. But that's yeah. a conversation for next year anyway. Um, but yeah, we'll chuck him into above Brandon Smith and below Blake Braley. Uh, all right, we'll move now into Joey Lusick here from the Butterman of the Squeals. Um, yeah, he's another guy who's kind of had his opportunity and never really taken a fall on. He's not the, I don't think, I think he's kind of a mid brain, like mid 20s, isn't he? He's not old, but he's not young. Um, yeah. And Brennan Hands is kind of the guy they're thinking about there. I don't think that Joey Lars, actually, is he getting older now? I'm going to, you talk, you tell me your opinion. I'll look, have a look at his age. Joey Lasik's um, got to be near his 30s by now. Mm. He's been around for a while because he played overseas. That's what I was, That's why I went to go and check out his age because, like, yeah, twenty eight years old. Yeah, same as Jaden Brown. Yeah, he's got to be. He's he's got to be not that great. You can't put him in as unproven. I'm sorry, you can't be twenty eight. Yeah. The number of clubs been around this and that. You got to be unproven. Uh, you got to be not that great. But I'd put him above that Sharky's bloke because, uh, mate. <laughs> that Sharky's bloke. Seriously, I'm, I. <laughs> 
I mean, oh man, that's funny. Um, that that is funny. I know what you're saying though. I personally would actually put him above Jake Simpson because I do think that when he comes on, he actually does and like something. Um, I haven't seen anything from Simpson so far. I'll, I'll put him above Simpson, but I don't think I could talk much more about him just given that he's not that great. Bro, that 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 uh, that Sharks bloke is so funny. Uh, <laughs> um, but that tells you why he's down the bottom there. It's Jaden Beryl, by the way. Um, but all right, oh, let's Jaden, mate. <laughs> Let's move now into the next guy, which is Lachlan Croker, even Manly, who's run up a couple of times now. Um, and is is kind of like a do the job as well, uh, in my personal opinion. Like I think I love he's... this guy. Oh, you love I him. Stop you there. I love this guy. I freaking hate Manly. Mate, <laughs> Lachlan Croker does the job nine times out of ten. How many times have you seen him kick 40 20s, make a try saving tackle, like score a try out of nowhere? This guy's the epitome of do the job and do the job well. Like mm-hmm. I if you're considering his last couple of years, obviously Braley has been like riddled with injury. I'd put him above Jaden Braley if you're considering that. But just given the overall circumstance and that Braley is a better player, I'd put I'd put Croker third. Um, I'd actually put him above Randall for the hooker position. I'd put I him above Randall. I'd put him any lower, to be honest. No, I'd definitely put him above Randall. Uh, I think that based on the fact that without the injuries, I'd, I'd personally put Croker above Jaden Braley. I would. Well, I'm happy. Croker. I'm happy putting him there. I just thought you'd go against it, given that. We're both well, fans of Braley, but uh, like he hasn't played. I, I would love to put Croker second. Yeah, we'll put we'll put Lachlan Croker second based on the fact that he has played. He is the hooker there. Um, and although he's got guys that are knocking on the door, like Gordon Chen Kum Tong and whatnot, and Jamie Humphreys, at the end of the day, Lachlan Croker is still the hooker. And he does do the job at a at a very solid level, but he's like a Jake Granville, who will do the job at such a great level, but you can't put him into quality. And you definitely wouldn't put him into not that great. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy to put him into to second. Um, and then we'll see what Jaden Braley can do when he's without without his injuries. Uh, but all right, let's move now into Mitch Kenny here for the Panthers, who unfortunately gets a really harsh rap. He gets a really harsh rap because he's not happy so got to resell. It's just as simple as that. Uh, yes. This guy is the hooker for the Panthers. He was in a battle with Sonny Luke uh, for the most part of 2023. And yet was clearly the guy that, you know, Ivan Cleary preferred. And he's clearly the guy the Panthers want to go with for, going forward. Um, for me, I think that Mitch Kenny, based off his accolades now, I do have to put him into quality. I think that he's won a premiership. And he also was a huge reason as to why they won the grand final. You know, he was he was a massive part of it and a massive part first of their season last year. Yeah, first try score. And I think that he, there was something that he did as well. Was it the, the final try that gave it, he passed it to Nathan Cleary? Um, for him to, I can't remember, but yeah, Mitch Kenny like is so underrated, man. In my he's opinion, he's underrated. He's a quality player. Given given what Brandon Smith has done in the game, and we're combining everything, I can't put him above Brandon Smith yet. I can't. That's just mm-hmm. me personally. I don't know what you would do. I know he's won the comp, but you got to think he's a system player. Like with all due respect, yeah, sure he's, play, he's well rounded, but you put anyone in that, not anyone, not anyone. But I take that back. You put anyone in the do the job category in that Penrith system at nine. I think I still think Penrith win the comp. No, I, I agree with you. Um, yeah, I think that you put anyone into that nine, they probably do. Sonny Luke probably still wins the premiership. Uh, there is maybe a few question marks about that. But with that being said, you know, whoever, it is a system. You know, it is a system. And Mitch Kenny, uh, yeah, he he did what he needed to do. And he did it at a quality level. I will agree with you that he still probably is below Brandon Smith. But Brandon Smith has a lot to do this year, in my personal opinion. Um, yeah. And I would say that, yeah, Marshall King, on a pure hooker level on who I think is a better hooker, I would say the four guys above him or the six guys above him are better than him um, and would improve the Panthers t- team. But with that being said, Mitch Kenny is still a quality hooker, so we'll put him into the back end of it. Sweet. There we go. All right, moving on now to Peter Mamazelis here for the Rabbitohs. Uh, this guy's been around the system for ages. Been around the system. I feel like I've heard his name for the last three years. and he hasn't Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I feel like I've heard this guy's name all the time, but it's just never kind of... Yeah, I, I just... I don't want to put him in not that great because, like, let the, like we've heard his name, but let, let the bloke play. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know if you want to do a fact check on this, but has he played less than? That's what I'm looking at right now. Less than yeah. 15 games. Um, yeah. So he's he's only 23 years old. Well, yeah, he was 20. He t- his birthday was six days ago, so he's 23 now. Um, he's played seven games for South Sydney um, and I, 10 I games to, for Greece. I got to put him in unproven. I got to put him in unproven. I'd probably put him. I'd probably put him second last. Yeah, I would agree with you. I, I don't think he's played enough games. He is still quite young, so there is still time for him to do something. Um, but and, and maybe he's the next answer when Damian Cook eventually retires because Cook is getting on now. Uh, so maybe Mamazelis is the guy that they're thinking about. But 
I guess it doesn't really fill you with a great deal of confidence, um, considering he has been around the system for ages and never gotten his, well, he's gotten seven games. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to put him below bronze and garlic above Jamie Humphreys. Uh, but I think next year, next year, if he doesn't get any kind of opportunity this year, it's going to start to to not look that great overall. Um, it'll be tough, yeah. Yeah, it'll be tough. But all right, let's move now into the Knights and we get to Phoenix Crossland here, who was obviously the guy that took over Jaden Braley last year of the Knights and actually did a really good job. I, I think that last year when we did this hooker tier rank, I can't remember who I did it with, but we had him not that great and he wasn't that great. He wasn't doing his job and... I think he was one of the bottom ones, but he really kind of turned everyone's thought process around with that massive run that Newcastle went on towards the back end of that year. Um, I do think he has to go into the do the job section, but I'd be interested to see where you you think to put him. Uh, I'll take a guess where I'd put him. Very very simple for me, and I'll tell you straight up what the number is. Uh, I would say... Oh, I don't know. This is scaring me now because I literally just asked you. <laughs> I, I would say... say I would say based off of last year, uh, the way that he played last yeah. year, he probably he probably goes above uh, Granville, but I think that based on his history, he'd be at bottom. Well, I was going to put him at fourth. I was going to put him above. Well, that's exactly where I was thinking. As so I said, based on last year, uh, just, yeah. just below Randall, but I'm happy to put him above Randall based on the fact that he is more of a probably he, – yeah, he did. Without his impact, Ponga doesn't – Newcastle don't go on the run. Ponga doesn't win the Dally M. Yeah, I agree. He's definitely he steered the ship there. He 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 can do the job. He can definitely do the job. Do you Brayley, think it's enough to put Granville? Uh, sorry, not. Do you think it's enough to put Cross on the above Jaden Braley based on last year? I, I would put him. I would happily put him at third. But I I still think what Braley has done in his career so far is still better than what Crossland's achieved. Yeah, yeah, I think if we see it again this year from Crossland, then he'll go above. Um, but okay, based so on, on like an aggregate sort of thing. Yeah. He really still holds it for me. Yeah, no, I agree. So we'll chuck him there. I think that, yeah, I, I had no idea. That's why it was so hard for me to think just because I didn't know whether you're going to put him above Walters or below Buddy Turpin or in the middle. Because yeah. he has no, been... You end up getting a spot on, yeah. Yeah, because he has been a guy that was very, very low. So he really rose his stocks in 2023. Uh, but let's move now into the Cowboys. And it is Reese Robson who... Uh, I don't think that last year was his best year. I think 2022, obviously, the Cowboys 2022 was a great. Um, you know, they went from 15th in turn 21 to third in turn 22 and then back down at 11th or whatever it was in 2023. Uh, and unfortunately, Reese Robinson kind of fell back down with the pack throughout that year, throughout last year. Um, I still think that he's a quality hooker. And I think that um, I think that he's probably going to go into the quality section. I, th- I think he definitely does go into the quality section. But I don't think that the hype is as high as it was going into 2023 as it is going into 2024. The hype's died down. If you ask me if I want Robson in my team or Billy Walters, I'll take Robson. I think he's a hard hitter and he throws absolute bullets out of dummy half. I'd definitely put him at the back end of quality. In a, in a bad year for the Cowboys, he still made his debut for the Blues. So I called that too. At the beginning of the season, I said, I oh, reckon yeah. Reese Robson's going to um, debut for New South Wales, and he did, which was great. Uh, you know, yeah, wasn't his greatest year, but with that being said, got his opportunity. And I don't think you can debut for Origin and not be into the quality section, to be completely exactly. honest with you. It's yeah. not possible. But Mitch Kenny did, oh, like, on a pure hooker level, you'd probably say that Reese Robson is a better hooker than Mitch Kenny, but that premiership and the way that Mitch Kenny played last year does really yeah. kind of, yeah, probably does put him above there. So um, on a pure hooker level, guys, I'd personally put him above, but I do think that it's fair to have him below Mitch Kenny. Uh, we go now into oh, the Kenry Bulldogs, Reid Marnie. Hmm. This one is probably the toughest one of this entire video, to be completely honest with you. Uh, was a very quality, very, very quality hooker at the Eels. Don't think he reached a leap, but he was definitely quality. Um and then the Bulldogs in 2023, it, it was just awful. Like, it, but that was it just that whole club or was it Reid Money as well? It was Reid Money as well, but I don't know. It's just that last year really, really put me off Reid Money quite significantly. What would your thoughts be, especially when one of your best mates is a Bulldogs fan? Yeah, yeah, my best mate, my, my mum, my brother, a lot of my like cousins, like a lot of them support the dogs. I got dogs fans all around me and they were so hyped for him to come to the club and he underperformed. They had a lot of injuries. The dogs, the pack wasn't there, but still, he was such a quality hooker. And I feel like he just lost his way. Like I can't put him in the quality. If I'm putting him based off his 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 career so far in the past, definitely pairing his quality. He was he was not nearing the elite, but 
He was nearing the top end of quality. He was kind of around the Jerry Marshall King area when he was yeah. um, when he was at the Eels. Yeah. And you're thinking, you know, he has a good season at the Dogs. He's going to near that top end of quality. I'm going to be like, wow, he does have an impact. But I'd have to put him in the do the job category. I can't put him in quality. Like I'd, I agree. I'd, I genuinely think that. I think that Lachlan Croak had a better year than Reed Marnie. No, look, I, I think that I would put Reed Marnie at the very top of do the job based on the fact that we know what he can provide and what he can do and what he did at the Eels. Um, I wouldn't personally put him below Billy Walters or Lachlan Croker uh, because I do think that Reed Marnie has more, one, Brilliant. potential, but also he was very quality at Eels. I think it was just one year that really has irked us, but at the end of the day, he still is a better hooker than those two guys. Because he was quality, sure, he's got to go to the front of the do the job. If we're going off last year alone, which I know we're not, Billy and Lachlan had a better year than, the, than him. Bro, Probably. if we're going based off of last year, um, obviously it removed Jaden Bradley because he was injured, but I'd personally put Reid Marnie at the bottom of do the job if it were going based off of last year. Off that, yeah, but since he's dropping from quality, I'm happy to put him at the start of do the job. Mm. Yeah, because look, if you're if you're taking a draft and right now you need a hooker and you've got Lachlan Kroger, Billy Walls and Reid Marnie on offer, you're absolutely taking Reid Marnie without a second guess. Jake Friend. Jake, Jake, what? Where, where'd Jake Friend come from? I, I'm just reminiscing of the time that we used to win the <laughs> well, I'm, I'll, I'll take, I'll take Reid Marnie. Where, 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 where did Jake Friend just come from? I just, I just, <laughs> Jake Friend. Okay, um, fair enough. Jake Friend was a very quality hooker, uh, but that <laughs> was just so random. But uh, yeah, look, I, Reed Marnie for me, yeah, you, you, you're taking over those two guys. And yes, I would take Jake Friend over the three of them um, yeah. just for, for the sake of it. But all right, we move now into Riley Jones here tonight. Um, I think he's going to go into Unproven, haven't we seen anything from him. Um, happy to put him at the bottom because I've... Yeah, I'd put him below Jamie Humphreys because I've heard a little bit more I've about Humphreys. Humphreys. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move now into the elite of the elite. Uh, the the guy that obviously used to play for Sydney Roosters and now plays the Gold Coast Titans. It is Sam Verrills. Uh, yeah. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll say what I need to say here. Love Sammy. I think that he, I think that when he's at his best, he is a top of quality kind of section. I think that he is such a superbly underrated hooker when he's playing. Unfortunately, he did not play many games for the Titans at all last year. I think he played like five games. He was injured for the majority of it. Um, it might be a little bit more than that. I'm not too sure. Uh, but Sammy Verrills, unfortunately, did injure himself uh, a, a couple of times in 2023. At the Roosters, like I said in last year's Hooker's tier ranking, I think he's so underrated, man. He, is, he, for me, is actually a top five hooker. But it's just unfortunate that his injuries are so significant that it hampers what he can produce. We need to see him play consistent footy to see if he can reach the top five. Sure, he's got the potential to be a top five hooker. Yeah. I wouldn't put him there, even though he did play for the Roosters, scored our first try in the grand final. Speaking of Jake Friend, he replaced Friend in that final in that starting position. It was incredible. I was so cut to to see him. I know we had a conversation at the time when it happened. I was really disappointed to see him let go. But I, it's it's hard because I don't want to put him in do the job. Hey, now, he's quality, but I, I think that right this very second, based off of the injuries, he does have to go at the bottom of it. Right this very second, he has to go in the bottom of quality if we're going to put him there. But then I'm trying to think, like, if, you, if you're if you asking someone, a non-Roosters fan, non-Titans fan, non-Broncos fan, non-Doggies fan, and you say, look, Verrills, Marnie, or Walters, how often does Verrills get the first choice there? And that's what I'm trying to think. Like, have we given him enough But I also to think... As a better hooker. Yeah, but I also thought this of Verrills before he even signed with the Titans. Um, when he was at the Roosters, I thought he was a superbly underrated hooker. Um, I think that if you're, you're thinking from a non-biased you know, point, the Roosters kind of have fallen off quite significantly once they've lost Sam Verrills. And we actually spoke about I spoke to you about this last year. I thought that Verrills yeah. was such a big loss for you guys because um, he is so integral to the, the team. There in the middle from yeah, the, exactly from right. The and, and, you know, the Titans... We won our first grand finals against the Tigers, but we won our first game with him. Then he got injured in the game against the Dragons, um, and we were up. We were leading by like twelve points oh, at that point. And then, you know, we went on a bit of a losing streak after that. Yeah. And unfortunately, because the Titans had just as many injuries, if not more, than the Doggies last year, and specifically in the spine with AJ, Kieran, Sammy Verrills, and and Tan. So, you know, I think that I think he is quality. And I, I do believe that he's a better hooker than Reed Marnie and Billy Walters, but I am okay if people criticise it in the comment section based off of last year and the limited game time he's had. But I, if I'm taken out of those three hookers, I am taking Sam Verrills over the two other two. I just know when he comes back and if he plays to the standard or just a little bit under the standard that we've seen him play when he comes back, I already know that people will, will understand why we've put him at the back end of quality because what he will produce if he plays at 80 90% of what we've seen him play will still be better than what we saw 
last year from all three of those top three players in in do the job. However, if he has an average year and he doesn't perform as well, I oh, can exactly. see how yeah. he slots into fourth on do the job list. Yeah, if he doesn't have a great year this year, uh, which I believe he does, but if he doesn't have a great year this year, then he yeah he will. Well, it, unfortunately, he, if he doesn't have a good year this year and is injured for quite a bit of it, touchboard, that's not true. But you'd probably, probably you'd really probably put him. Chris Randall above him, uh, you know, yeah. based on the fact that he'll probably play more minutes than him, um, based off of that knowledge. But with that being said, for the time being, that's a real tough one. Um, but I can understand what all the comments say, whether it be above or below or whatnot. So we'll put him at the back end there. Uh, all right, we've got a couple more to go here. Now we're moving to the Rabbitohs, and it is Saliba Havili for. Uh, a team that, you know, he's more of a 14 role. Um, he really kind of comes off the bench. He doesn't usually start in that nine due to Damian Cook there. I do think that he, I think it was 2022 or 2021, he was the best 14 in the business. I actually said that he is the, the number one 14 in the game. He comes on and just absolutely cracks on, man. Um, I love what Saliba Havili does, but I do think he is in a higher end of the do the job section. I don't think he's in quality. Definitely not in quality. Not, not in quality. He is in do the job. He runs hard. He barely gets tackled, to, like brought to the ground when he gets tackled. He's a big body. He does the job well. You know what you're getting week in, week out. It's nothing special, but it's the fact that it's so consistent and it's so good. When I say special, like nothing's going to be out the blue, but you're like, oh shit, this bloke's come on. Like, you know, as 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 a defensive line. So I'd definitely put him in the do the job category. I'd probably put him above. I'm, I'm, I'm hovering him over a spot right now, wondering if you're thinking the same thing. Granville and Randall. That's that is actually insane that you've done that because that's exactly where I had it. It was in between Granville and Randall. I was hovering it over there, and then yeah. the longer you were going, I was starting to slightly move above Randall, and I brought him back in. So that's that's yeah. crazy. That's exactly where I was thinking. That's funny. Yeah, I dropped him in between the two because it's just I still think like Randall offers more as a nine. Mm. Yeah, I, I I agree. Um, so yeah, he'll go above uh, Granville. And below Randall, but yeah, that's just crazy. Out of all the plays we've got on the board here, that's exactly where I was hovering, and you can see it in the video. Uh, but all right, let's now move into the Panama Panthers, and it is Sonny Luke, a guy that a lot of people had so much hype for going into 2024, uh, but unfortunately just never really got his opportunity. It really hurt a lot of people in Supercoach uh, because he would play very limited minutes, and people were begging for him to play more. Uh, but Mitch Kenny was doing his job and at a quality level, that's why he's in quality. Uh, for me, Sonny Luke hasn't really had a great amount of time to prove himself, but he probably has played enough games. In, <coughs> sorry. He probably has played enough games in the hooker role. I would still put him into the do-the-job category, but I just don't think we've seen enough out of him to put him into anywhere above that bottom area. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is a make-or-break year for him in terms of the team maker. I'd put him at the very back end of do-the-job, mm. knowing that if he does a good job this year, he can well and truly see himself in the middle of the do-the-job category for next year. But if he doesn't perform well and he has the same year and he's mediocre, we can put him at the very top of not that great this time next year. But I, I know he can do the job because we've, he's, come, he's come on. We've seen him play. We've seen how crafty he is. He can definitely do the job. And he probably finds himself on the bench in at least half the NRL clubs if he leaves. Yeah. Um, so I'd definitely put him in do the job. But because he hasn't done that much, he's still proven himself. So I can't put him in unproven. I'd, I'd just have to put him behind Turpin just at last and do the job. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that you can make an argument for potentially him being above Turpin, but I am happy to put him at the bo bottom just because he needs just to the have... Turpin's played a couple of seasons like, on him. Yeah, I agree. He's got the experience there. And also, something look, he's at the Panthers. Like, if if you don't come in and, and kill it... Like, when he comes on, he's fine. Like, he's, he, he, he's decent, but we need to see more of it. So, 2024 is a massive year for something look, as you said. All right, six more to go here, and it is Talon De Silva from the Tigers... Uh, I've heard his name the last couple of years, uh, but with that being said, he just hasn't really kind of grasped the opportunity just yet. He's still very, very young. Yeah, I'd be putting young. him unproven. Very young, unproven. Oh, I'd put him just behind Edwards. Uh, oh, Harrison Edwards. Yeah, he, he, this guy's actually. I, I've seen. Him I have heard some good. He's, yeah, he's, I have heard some good reports in town of Silver. Sorry, what were you saying? No, I'm saying I've seen him play some junior games. He's he's actually good. I, just the fact that Edwards came into first grade at Dolphins, you know, in their first year, and he did such a great job defensively. I'd I'd, I'd have him just behind Edwards from um Harrison Edwards. Is it from the Dolphins? I'd have him just behind him. Yeah, I, mean, I want to get too is... unproven, but I think, I, he's I, really I think he's young. himself more than the other three that would be on the right of him. That's right. He's only eighteen. Uh, like I've heard 15. his name for a couple of years though, which is good, a good sign because if I've heard his name for a... Blaze dead set, he's actually he's actually a freak. Yeah, like that's actually a really good sign because if I've heard his name for years and he's only 18, means that he's not even 
he, I shouldn't have heard of him really. It would have been 16. When I was, player. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really good sign. But yeah, we'll put him there. Um, could be higher, but again, he's still super young. So that's actually exciting just to think about for you Tigers fans because got to miss out, not getting any younger. Um, so maybe he's the next guy to to come in afterwards uh, for the Tigers. But all right, we've got five left to go and both Raiders are coming up in a minute. But the first Raider is Tom Starling, who... I don't know if he's lived up to the hype that people believed he was going to be. Like, he's he's a really good... And Ricky Stewart at the Raiders is a very, very good man manager. He knows how to get the best out of... Well, he knows how to man manage the minutes of players, in my personal opinion. He's one of the best at the game for it. Um, and I yeah. think that I would trust... I would trust Ricky Stewart's understanding of what Tom Starling can produce more than I would trust other coaches on the, the minutes that they give to certain players. For me, Tommy Starling had such a big reputation that he could have gotten into the quality uh, previously, but has not lived it to, to it. So I'd be looking towards putting him into the middle area of do the job. I was going to put him just above hands. Above hands. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I think I'd put him, a, I personally would put him above Granville. I don't know. I just feel like Granville's achieved so much more. And I know it's not just about the past, but I feel like, I think, uh, I, like, I would agree with you. He has achieved so much more, but I think that going into 2024, if you're You've wanting... i take Starling over him, yeah, and I'd take him really over him. I'm happy to put him there, to be honest. Yeah. Would you take Tom Starling or Silver Havili? You there? I, I'm there, I'm just thinking, because oh. I, I don't think... <laughs> No, it's a tough one. I'm actually thinking hard about this one because I know Stalin can play more minutes than Havili, in my opinion. But given that he can and he's got a motor on him and he's obviously weighs, I'm pretty sure he weighs less. Like Havili's a, a bloody brick. I, I Havili just... has also got the Tonga representation. So I think we probably put um, Havili above him based okay. off of that representation. Yeah. But it is yeah. a very tough one because I think that if, I think that, oh, like I think that on a pure hooker level, I would say Tom Stalin probably goes above if he does, he should he should be playing more. Like, there's something about him. Why is he not playing yeah. more? Why, yeah, you know, why aren't Raiders going to that next step? So I'm happy to put Havili above him because I think the international representation and the fact that he's been able to be, you know, a consistent player in the Rabbitohs squad, which is obviously a better club than the Raiders, mm. um, you know, based off form over the last few years. Uh, except I, for last year. Um, but yes, I, year, I, but I agree with you. Just above. I, I would say that I think they're used in a similar fashion, but Havili is obviously more of a just buddy smash him hooker, whilst Tom Starling is more of a electric speedy hooker. But they kind of play similar minutes, I would say. I don't think they play a great deal different. Um, but yeah. I, I would which say is, that, which is my which is my concern because yeah, because Starling should be playing almost double the minutes Havili plays. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that one. So yeah, we'll put put Starling below Havili above Granville. I think that's yeah. kind of fine there. Uh, all right, we get to. Another Broncos hooker here, and it is Tyson Smoothie, uh, who did play for the Storm uh, for a little bit as well, uh, and now is at the Broncos. I, I don't think that he – I think he is going to go into that not that great category, man. I think he's had time to prove himself. He hasn't had time to prove – he hasn't had, um, done anything with that time to prove himself, and um, I think he's probably towards the back. Uh, like, I don't think when he came off of the Broncos. Yeah, I, I would say so, because I don't think that he did – what I don't think he did well when he came on for the Broncos last year. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to put him there. I'm, it's just black and white, just not that good. Yeah, he's above. He's above Beryl based on the fact that he's probably younger. Um, but still, um, yeah, we'll just chuck him there, black and white. All good. right, final three here, and we're getting to Wade Egan for the Warriors, who has been phenomenal for the Warriors, especially last year. Um, he was great. Um, I don't know. I don't think I could put him into the elite category alongside Goddard with and Grant based off of kind of what we've gone off before, prior. Uh, if you're going based off last year individually, you're probably looking at Wade Egan above Damian Cook, but, you know, that's a very tough kind of comparison to make. Wade Egan for me goes third in quality. Yeah, third in quality, but below Blake Braley. Oh, to be honest... I'd probably put him above Blake Braley. You know what I'm actually thinking? And I don't I don't know, like, correct me if I'm wrong. I know it's opinion, so you actually can't correct me, but I've just... Blake Braley, I'm I'm just looking at it. I, I just dragged um Wade Egan up. I'm like, you know what? He looks perfect in in second position. I'd put him in second mm. position going into next year. Just just because of what Cookie's done in the last few years. And it hasn't been as great, still been better than Egan up until last season. But I'm thinking Jeremy Marshall King should probably be third and Braley fourth now that I look at it. But I'm I'm happy to put Wade Egan second. I don't think I can put Wade Egan behind um Blake Braley. I just think he was instrumental. 
Well, that's what I was going to say to you, right? Because you said third, and I was like, yeah, because because you said third, and I was like, oh, I don't know. I think I, I think Wade Egan should go second. Um, and I just think that based off of the history of of Cookie, I don't want to drop him anywhere further than where he is. Same. I think um, it's disrespectful to Cookie. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with Wade Egan being in fourth overall. Um, and then Blake Brownlee and Jerry Marshall King. I think that you can kind of put them on top of each other, is what I'd say there. You can kind of put them on top of each other. We can't actually physically do that, guys. But I would say they're in a very similar position where at least Marshall, yeah, Blake Bradley just has a lot to prove this year. I could definitely see Blake Bradley dropping off quite a lot if he doesn't have a good year this year. Um, and he doesn't kind of reach the, the height. And he just has a stagnant season. He'll probably drop off and Marshall King probably goes above him. But I think we do keep him there for the time being. Um, but Wade Egan, I'm, I'm happy that Wade, Egan, Wade Egan's put in the top five, though. That's a that's really good. Um, the Warriors fans will love that. I'm hoping next year we can put him first for quality. Yeah, it'd be great. It would be great. But all right, we've got two more to go here. And it is Zach Wolford here from the Raiders, who is kind of their starting guy now. Um, it's not Thomas Darling. It is Zach Wolford who has kind of taken the reins there. Uh, as we saw the other day, uh, apparently he ended uh, <laughs> ended John Bernard's season, uh, or career, sorry, as a rugby league player. Um, Zach Wolford's kind of, he, he is... He's definitely above Tom Starling for me based on the fact that he has taken the, the reins at the Raiders. But I also think that they're probably in a very similar position overall. I wouldn't actually put him in drastic differently areas. areas. To Starling? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't put him completely yeah, he opposite. Good job defensively. I think in attack, he doesn't offer much. I'd actually put him behind Starling just by one. I'd put, I'd, like, they can literally hold hands in that position, but I'd still put yeah. Starling above him. I know, I know Wolford's got the starting gig, but I, I still... I, if you ask me which player am I picking to start, I'm, I'm picking Starling. I would agree. Uh, again, I, I I do trust in what kind of Ricky's thought process is there, but I do think that, yeah, if I'm selecting and you're selecting, yeah, I'd personally take Starling above Zach Wolford. I don't think he offers any same amount. And that's what I was saying. I think they're both in the exact same kind of area. They they weren't in opposite areas. So um, it's funny, the Raiders are just bang in the middle of the, the midsection, which is kind of what the Raiders just are overall as a glove for the last quite a while besides 2019. Um, but there we go. We've got one last player to go here. And it's a guy that is at the Roosters now, uh, who is Zach Docker Clay, who did actually play for the Doggies as well, didn't he? Um, he hasn't debuted for us. He's been playing a lot of, of cup games for the Bears. I think there's one place and one place only to prove to put him, and it's in Unproven. I'd put him just behind De Silva, only because I've heard his name a fair bit. And I've seen what he can do. He's an interesting player. He can play that sort of 13 role as well. Um, but he's definitely unproven because we haven't seen what he can do in first grade properly yet. So I'm happy to put him in unproven. I'm the only him. issue is that yeah. he's 28 years old. I get that. But I think... Actually, he's played 33 games, 19 for Hull Kingston Rovers in 2017, and then 14 games for the Dogs. And obviously, this is his first year at the Roosters. I think he's played more than an. I think he's played too many games to go into unproven. And at twenty eight years old as well. It's fair enough if you want to put him in the not that great section. I just think he hasn't been given a fair crack to show his abilities in first grade. And I think it comes down to his versatility and that. Sure, he's not as good as everyone else, but when are you going to? I mean, you're going to judge someone off playing fourteen games for the Dogs. I don't think anyone who plays fourteen games for the Dogs is great. Do we see yeah, what the, the only before putting him in, or is that enough to cut him off? I... The only issue that I see is that you know he's 28 years old. He hasn't made an impact. He played 19 games in England um, and scored six tries in those 19 games. To be fair, for Hull Kingston Rovers, I don't know if they're in the first division, second division, or whatnot. And he played for the Bulldogs uh, last year. What happened? Why was he gone for? Like, did he just not play for? 2018, 19, 20, 21. Did he not play I'm for not four sure years about his background or what happened during the COVID times, but I know when the Roosters got him on board, he was instrumental in the cup side and helped us get to the final. And he was quite a good player week in, week out. So that's why I thought give him one year, Roosters might debut and we'll, we'll see where, where he sits. That's why I think I've been unproven. But given that, he, that he's been around for that long, I'm happy to put him in the not that great section and probably put him second last there, third last. Um, I would... Personally, yeah, it's just that age factor. I personally put him in third last. I think that and I'm not saying it's wise. I think that obviously the Roosters factor, you want to see the best out of him. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to see yeah. him turn it up. So that's probably why you probably don't want to put him to that not that great category. Um, but I do think that based off of the age factor and based off of the 
amount of games he has technically played, it, it probably does. It would just look weird to put a 28-year-old amongst all those guys and unproven. Yeah, um, who are guys like eighteen that's years old, twenty years old? I think I would be most in the comment sections to that. So, are you putting him second last or third last? Sorry, third last. Um, I would. Yeah, I'd put him in third last above to Smoothie. Um, you could probably put him alongside Beryl based on the fact of their age, but it doesn't really matter. It's a much of a muchness, really. Um, but overall, there we, there we go. So you're happy with that to put him in? I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's wrap it up here because we've absolutely slapped it down. We've done all the players, man, and we've uh, done a pretty good job. I don't think there's much really that I believe people will have a drastic difference of. Obviously, everyone's going to have a difference of opinion. But if you were to go through this list, what do you think would be the biggest? Who do you think would people, as a general consensus, would say is too high? And who would you say the people will, will say is too low? I think we'd have some people say um, Crossland's a bit low given the year that he had. But I think a lot of people will be focused on the year that he had and the run that he had. Um, and I think from a too high perspective, given that the Sharks haven't done much when making the finals, maybe Braley's a bit too high when you see what um, what Robson and Mitch Kenny have been able to do and Brandon Smith in their careers so far. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. But I, I do think that, again, these I, I lists are... They deserve, their, they, they deserve their place, but I'm, I'm talking what the comment section is going to oh, say. Oh, of course. Oh, no, this is our list. Yeah. So we, these, these guys, for us, we think this is fair. Yeah. <laughs> we think this is it because we just did it. But overall, I think that, um, yeah, it, like as long as we don't have completely massive gaps between where oh, the consensus right. thinks and then where we think, that's okay. Like if it's relatively close, I don't think that anyone here, I, I do think Bulldogs fans will push back on Reed Marnie because they just push back on anything. Uh, but I think if you actually listen to what we had to say, you understand why we put him there. But can go back into quality by the end of this year. Uh, and then I do think that, you know, maybe, maybe people, nah. No, overall, no, it's fine. Maybe Rabbitohs fans might have a cry about Damien Cook not being an elite. But at the I'm end of the fine, day... I'm crying, trust me. <laughs> but overall, uh, we also kind of explain that well. So, guys, that will do us here for today. Obviously, we've been going for about an hour and 20, hour and a half now. So, you definitely can't complain about how long we've been going for and really analysing all these players. Obviously, Norman, thanks for coming on, man. Let everyone know where they can find you. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me, Blaze. Uh, at Sportshare TV, TikTok. Instagram, YouTube. We're going to try to ramp up the YouTube this year. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, most of our content on TikTok and, uh, and Instagram for the time being. Hopefully, you see you all at the at the charity match on the third of Feb at Lift Mobile. You better be there at a damn well charity match, son. And if you're not there at the charity match, but you got the stream with myself and Clarky, uh, but it's going to be an amazing events. So definitely get down if you're in Sydney. It's going to be an amazing day. We've got so much stuff for you guys to do down there. Multiple games. Uh, like I said, the link will be in the description. Um, and then when the stream link comes out. We'll tuck that in as well. Uh, but we appreciate you as always. Obviously, guys, hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new around here. We're doing every single player in every single position with different content creators. So it's a massive series. Uh, and we'll be basically two a week uh, from now until the start of the season. So it's going to be absolutely huge. But we appreciate you as always. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.